If you're thinking of moving to Kansas City and you're looking at properties on the internet, trying to get an idea of what you can get for your money, well, it's really important to know that property taxes can vary quite a bit from county to county. Locals often even get this incorrect, assuming that the highest priced neighborhoods are gonna come with the highest taxes. So in this video, we're going to break down what taxes really look like in the five major metropolitan counties and stay to the end and I'll share a couple tips on how to argue overpriced valuations with the assessor right here in Kansas City. Hi, this is Justin Berry at the Plains Paris Real Estate Team right here in Kansas City. If you're thinking of moving to or within the Kansas City area and you want to know everything you need to know before you make a big decision, go ahead, click that thumbs up and ring that subscription bell. That way you're notified every time one of these new videos comes out. It helps you stay informed and it really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. So if you're even thinking of moving this way, go ahead and call, reach out to us, whatever you're most comfortable with at 816-439-8705. Call, text, again, DM, email, whatever is best for you. We are excited to be part of your journey. And remember, when it comes to moving to Kansas City, all you gotta do is point the direction and we're gonna guide you there. Kansas City is made up of five primary counties. So north of the river, we're gonna have Platte and Clay counties. South of the river on the Missouri side, we've got Jackson County. And on the Kansas side, you're going to find Johnson and Wyandotte counties. Most locals believe that Johnson County has the most expensive taxes in the city. So while it's true that this county has the highest average home prices, the most amount of corporation headquarters and the most amount of shopping, dining, and amenities, it's just not true that the taxes here are the most expensive. You see, tax Taxes are just based on what it costs to run the government and the city services. So Johnson County has such a strong tax base that not only do you get more and higher quality services, but the amount you pay per dollar in terms of property tax is actually less than most other counties in the city. So, which it makes sense if you stop and think about it. If you have a school full of kids and each home in the area is paying their fair share of taxes, but the homes are lower valued, that means the county has to raise the levy to pay for the school. In short, that means the same home in one part of the city can have drastically different taxes than the same home if it were setting in another area. This makes looking at homes on the internet, you know, difficult. Often we'll have customers call in wanting to see a house just because the price is low, but price is only one part of the equation. So you still have to consider the interest rate, utility costs, uh, insurance rates, and then of course taxes if you really want to understand the actual cost of owning a home and create an apples to apples comparison. Often when our clients and customers learn of these nuances, they end up wanting to look in some other areas as well. Most people in Kansas City would assume that Johnson County would be the most expensive in terms of property tax, but Wyandotte actually is the most expensive at $1,810 per $100,000 of value. Now the second most expensive county is gonna be Jackson County, which runs $1,430 per $100,000 of value as of last year. Of course, they have quite a mess this year with property valuations, so it remains to be seen if their rates do end up increasing. Johnson County comes in in the middle at $1,380 per $100,000 of value. While it's not the cheapest, this county, again, offers the most services of any county in the metro, and it's still able to keep their taxes so competitive. There's a reason why so many corporations and high earners choose to live in this area. Now, looking north of the river, Clay County comes in at $1,000 thousand two hundred and ten dollars per one hundred thousand dollars of value and the most affordable county in the metro which would surprise most people because this county does have a lot of very large homes and expensive properties including the national golf course and so forth but it is going to be platte county at $1,210 per $100,000 of property valuation. So it's again, they have a great tax base and they don't offer a ton of services uh, within the county, not compared to Johnson County, and it allows you to pay less per dollar in taxes. Now assessment years occur on odd years and when they do occur, especially the last 10 years or so, notices go out that property values have increased and in turn your taxes are probably going to go up. Now keep in mind that property value increases do not necessarily mean your taxes are going to go up. It just it really depends on the mill rate that's set by the county based on the costs that are needed to run the county against the tax base. 
that's available to levy against. So just imagine that if the market crashed again, and no, I, I, I do not expect a crash, but let's just pretend that the big crash happened again and everyone's value fell 50%. The cost of running the county still costs the same, so the mill rate would have to double to make up for the 50% loss of that tax base. But a rule of thumb, your taxes are probably gonna continue going up as fast as the value of your home goes up. I mentioned earlier that Jackson County had a mess going on with their assessor's office, and this is not the first time that Jackson County has had issues like this, and there are a few reasons why. So I'm gonna quickly explain what I know about the problems over there and explain how they do the assessment. So I'll share a couple tips on how to argue your value with the assessor if you feel the value of your property is overvalued. I'll put them at the end. First, you have to understand that assessors, they're not appraising your property the same way that a traditional appraiser would. I've been both assessor staff for Johnson and Clay County, and I've been an appraiser now for about 20 years, so I can give you a little bit of uh, insight on this. But as an appraiser, I would go out to a property, I'd collect the measurements, you know, measure the house, I'd take notes, some photos, then I'd go back, do a report, and compare that home against at least three other comparable properties. Now, an assessor, on the other hand, they have to do hundreds hundreds of thousands of properties and it would not be feasible to appraise each one of those the way that we do as appraisers. They do what's called mass appraisal. So in mass appraisal, you're basically just sending guys out to collect data. That's what I did for them. I was a data collector. And at some point, um, usually during construction, you know, we would go out, we would measure the property and we'd fill out a property data card. Now this data card plugs into an algorithm that considers a lot of other data points and the computer basically spits out evaluation. It's the homeowner's responsibility to ensure that it is a fair valuation. There are no human eyeballs generally reviewing that work. It just goes out, it's in the mail, and it's up to you to come in and argue it if you think it's overpriced. In the case of Jackson County, about eight years ago, a similar issue occurred where inconsistent data was causing valuations to be inconsistent from one neighborhood to the next. I actually was contracted to help clean that data up back then, but we had it kind of figured out, but recently Jackson County switched software. And from what I understand, they may have been making blanket adjustments that were not market derived. So I've not independently confirmed this, but I have read several articles and I've heard from some appraiser colleagues that for instance, they applied a 50% increase on all vacant commercial lots. So if this is true and a class action suit that was just filed proves this to be true, it will be interesting to see how Jackson County actually remedies this. Now, our phones have been blowing up with appraisal and real estate clients wanting to know how to best approach fighting these uh, overvaluations, and we've been providing comps and helping them strategize the best way to do so. So here are some tips on what to do at an informal hearing. The assessor at an informal hearing, they're just there trying to negotiate. They're just trying to prevent having to go to the Board of Equalization hearing, which takes more time and is much more formal. So this is just an informal initial hearing, and it's more like a mediation before you go to court. Do not come to the meeting saying your neighbor pays less in taxes. You will just be getting your neighbor's taxes raised and that's no way to make friends with your neighbor. Now when I was at the county we'd see that all the time. Like, Well my house isn't as nice as my neighbor and they're paying less in blah 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 and it ended up being that we'd have to raise the neighbor's taxes if they pointed it out. So don't do that. Verify that your home's value has not actually increased by calling us or your realtor. Often homeowners do not realize what their home is actually worth until we let them know. And uh, you know they've made a wise investment, but unfortunately they're gonna have to pay the taxes. If you think that your home is overvalued, then you need to decide whether the overvaluation is because of condition or if the assessor just got their valuation wrong. Now, if your home is inferior in condition to most of the homes in your area or if it needs major updating or repair, this may actually be the best way to get your value lowered. So keep in mind that this adjustment, it affects the property record, which may have longer lasting effects on your taxes than if you just got them to lower the value, because in two more years, the computer's gonna spit out 
the value again, ignoring what you did this time around and you'll have to do it all over again. Now, if you do think that your property has some condition issues, go ahead, get some photos, get a third party contractor to come in and give you some quotes. Then I would go down to the assessor, show them that, hey, there's more to the house that you don't know about. You didn't know my basement was cracked. You didn't know my roof was bad or whatever that is. Bring in as many of those photos as you can uh, you can come up with to, to you know build your case. Um, then I would make a second argument. I would make first off, hey, the condition, here's what it costs to fix my house. But then I would make the argument that condition does not necessarily equal value. So a great example of that is when we put carpet in a house. Say it costs $5,000 to add new carpet to a house, it may affect the value of the house $20,000 because you know, because it affects the ability to market the property and the out-of-pocket expense that a buyer would have. So cost does not necessarily equal value. And if you can try to get it down a little bit on value and a lot on condition, I think you'll be better off in the long run. Now, if you think that your home is in good shape, but the assessor just overvalued your property, I recommend at this point getting an appraisal from a certified appraiser. Now reach out to us and we are happy to point you in the right direction. Now, an appraisal is the best way, again, to lower the value in this specific scenario. However, an appraisal is around $400. So you wanna make sure that the savings is substantial enough to invest in an appraisal. Um, do not, of course, rely on websites like Zillow to give you a value. These will not be considered and they're notoriously incorrect, especially in the Kansas City area. Now, if you don't want to order an appraisal, the next best thing you could do is reach out to our team and we would be happy to get you a list of comparables and even estimate the listing price of your property using real data and our expertise. Now, taxes are a part of life, and unfortunately, you're probably just gonna have to pay them one way or the other. I don't have any crazy solutions for you there, but I do think it's important to know where in the city you get the most for your money. So if you're even thinking of moving to Kansas City and you could use someone to point you in the right direction, reach out to us immediately at 816-439-8705. Our team is here to make your transition to Kansas City a breeze. If you haven't done it already, please click that thumbs up, hit that subscribe bell. It really appeases the YouTube gods and it will actually help our channel grow tremendously. So very much appreciated if you would do that for us. And remember, when it comes to moving to Kansas City, all you have to do is point the direction and we'll guide you there.